Is your sales team made up of a pure hunter? If so, that might be working against your business. And that's why you're not realizing the bottom line results that you should. Hi, I'm Ziki. Welcome back to the channel. If you want to know every time I upload new content, click the subscribe button and you'll get notification each time. So why do I say a team full of hunters might actually be wrong for your business? Well, we have to back up a second um, and just get the definition of a hunter. What does that actually mean? And some of the traits that they'll demonstrate, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, um, but they're gonna be aggressive. They're going to be what traditionally we call the high D, dominance. They're going to be extroverts. They're going to be focus driven, results driven. They always keep the end goal in mind, i.e. lock the client in, sign terms of business, etc. They're going to be not necessarily follow process because typically your high Ds, your hunters aren't that processed. So the attention to detail might not be there. They're going to have a really strong can-do mindset. Get out of my way. Stop choking me with processes, KPIs. I know what I got to do and they're going to go out and do that. So they are, that's just some of the traits. And that's before we talk about the internal competitiveness that out of that whole team, they're going to want to be the best the top biller and so forth. So there's that internal as well as external competition. So they're gonna do what they need to do to close the deal and be the best. Great, does that not translate into bottom line dollars? Not necessarily. So now that we've got that definition clear, let's talk about some of the things, the reasons why I say a whole team of hunters might not be right for you. First thing's gonna, first point is gonna be your leadership team. Do you have a strong enough leadership team to manage these types of individuals? Now, one of the things I see a lot is salespeople don't like being managed by individuals that have not actually ran a desk. So that's not to take away some of the tremendous value individuals from outside our industry brings. However, I see this real rub between those leaders that have never ran a desk, trying to manage these salespeople. Now, I've done a separate video on that, so you might want to check that out as well. But that's the first thing. Then not only that, does your sales leader have what he or she needs to be able to manage an individual like that, allow them to still be themselves, be their authentic self, their creativity, their, their competitiveness, their client facing skills, their ability to knock down doors and barriers and things like that, yet ensure they work within the needs of the overall business. In other words, I, have you got a leader that knows how to align that individual with the business? Because here's the thing, you don't align the business with an individual. That's where I see a lot of companies um, get into trouble. They adapt their processes to suit their high performing salesmen. And that comes back to bite them. But that's a conversation for another day. So your leader needs to be able to manage the individual and ensure that they they are working within the needs of the business. But here's the other thing. They need to be able to manage that individual's aggressiveness, competitiveness. Now you're probably wondering, well, why do we want to manage someone's competitiveness? Well, here's the thing. It creates massive rub. We've all seen the rub it creates between delivery and sales. Whilst I firmly believe both are salespeople, but again, that's a conversation for another day. But that's not the rub I'm talking about. I'm talking about the rub it creates on the rest of the business, i.e. your finance team, 
your proposals team, your payroll team. It could be any number of other departments. And again, it's all gonna depend on the size of your business and, and the vertical you're in. But let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Salespeople typically don't like hearing the word no, and they don't like saying no to a client. Because the fear is, well, if I say no, I'm not gonna close the client. So one of the biggest ones I see, and it again, doesn't matter what industry you're in, and there is an argument to be made that clients do use agencies for this purpose, but it's cash flow. It's agreeing to ridiculous payment terms at low, at low margins. Well, that's great for the client's cash flow, but what about your cash flow? And that's where that rub happens because now you've left your finance team trying to cash flow the rest of the business, project the business, understand where investments need to be made and, and so forth. They're trying to balance the books and you've got a salesman that's going out giving clients whatever payment terms they want. And that creates a massive rub internally. That's one of the examples, but the other example is unexpected demand on your delivery teams, unexpected demands on your proposals team, for example. I see so many times clients, you know, salesman talks to a client and client says, yes, we want a proposal by Monday. And they will bring it back into the business. I'll expect your proposals team to put that proposal tender together by Monday. Why do we allow them to do that? And that's before we start talking about especially if you're in that temp space, agreeing Friday afternoon, saying to a client, great, you want 10 people starting Monday, not a problem. The pressure that creates is immense. So that's the type of rub that I'm talking about. But here's the thing, what can you do? What can you do? Because we all want those individuals that are closing business. So I have a couple of ideas for you. And again, by no means the right solution for each and every one that's watching this video, but how about having individuals on your sales team that are a combination of what I just talked about earlier, your Heidi's, your extroverts, balance that with somebody that's a little bit more introvert, a little bit more attention to detail. Misconception in our industry seems to be that if you are not a Heidi, an extrovert, and you're an introvert, you're not gonna be successful in this business. I beg to differ. I see so many amazing salespeople that are actually introverts, but they get overlooked. So that's one thing that I would uh, recommend you do. And I guess one of the reasons I'm saying that over and above everything I've just said, your clients, when you're dealing with HR, for example, especially if you're dealing with a large tender, you're dealing with HR, you're dealing with procurement. You don't necessarily want that Heidi extrovert person pressurizing them. You want that salesperson to be able to work with them, to be able to recognize uh, the personality traits, to be able to bring the best out of that individual, to be able to work at their pace. But all, not only that, the attention to detail part. Because again, I talked about an internal rub. When you have those two profiles, salesperson and talking to an introvert, who is also one of the decision makers, there's inevitably that rub. So when you have a balance in your team, it allows you as a business to determine who's the best person to close that particular deal. Now again, that's a different rabbit hole that I'm not gonna go down here because I know that's gonna create a lot of internal questions and so forth. But that's just some of the things that you can do. As always, if you found this content of value, I'd love to hear your opinion. So please leave a comment below. If you wanna be notified every time new content is uploaded, please hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification. And of course, if you wanna to talk to me and you may have a situation in your team at the moment, Hey, you may disagree and you want to talk to me. Love to hear it. So feel free to drop me an email um, and we can arrange a time to jump on a call. On that note, thanks ever so much for listening and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.